Hello YouTubers. Uh, thought I'd show the GMRS antenna my family and I are going to be using. This one's Workman branded, but I'm sure a lot of you that are in the two-way radio stuff will recognize the packaging. It says made in Taiwan. Um, you know, I was going to homebrew something, but I, I wanted to get this up in a hurry because the handhelds just just aren't doing the job and I got a little uh, I recently got a little Kenwood TK 805D and I'd like to get it on the air I don't have a I don't have a suitable UHF antenna I don't have UHF anything I've just never been a I've never been a UHF person I, I put the antenna together for the uh, uh, the 460 megahertz settings since we'll be running 462 you know GMRS I actually shortened it a hair you know compared to what they had on the settings there's the antenna it's actually really well I feel like it's been really well built I was surprised as inexpensive as it was and that was another reason I decided to just go ahead and buy something as uh, like I said I wanted to I wanted to get something up quickly and building my own was gonna take Man, I'm just not fast at it at all. I got some health issues and a lot of times that interferes with doing stuff like that. So I knew it was going to take me a while to homebrew or anything. So this was only, uh, I think with shipping, this was just barely over $40. It's 5 8 wave. Um, I forget what the, it's rated in DB gain over, uh, I think it's in the, rated in DB gain over a quarter wave, and I can't remember what it said, four or five, you know, over a quarter wave. Anyways, I thought I'd give a quick show of the antenna. Like I said, it's a Workman branded one. Not much information on these online. Um, I, I'm just going to put it up temporarily here in the backyard because uh, I want to test the antenna and test uh you know, test my little Kenwood a little more. I'm just running it off of the Kenwood off of a dummy load so far and having a, you know, I haven't had it hooked to an antenna. I've, uh, I've got an ancient tripod set up back here in the backyard that I've had for uh, 15 or more years. Never have used it. And a piece of bent, you know, top rail fence. You know, pole that a friend I got from a friend of mine some time ago. Figured I could use that for some for some home brewing sometime, and that'll be my temporary my temporary setup. What I'm wanting to do is I found uh, I found this along with a perfectly good top section of uh, Rhone 25Z tower. Uh, it's been some months ago. Somebody had thrown it in a creek that's real close to the little town I live here. I just happened to look over the side railing and couldn't believe there's a Z tower down there. And uh, and I knew I could use these OTV antennas, you know, for some home brewing. Actually, the TV antennas don't look to be very old. Top section of Z tower was undamaged. There was a 10 foot intermediate that probably only about I don't know two three foot. It's probably only usable on it anymore. It was. Uh, you know the bottom part of it most of it was you know destroyed for the most part twisted and mangled I actually think I'm gonna take these TV antennas off of here and I've got another uh, I got another piece of this old push-up pole that I've never used a full 10 foot section it's already bent and actually that bend is, is, is solid and that little antenna I have is so so light I'm gonna slide that 10 foot section in there and I think I'm gonna side mount it off of you know, off the tower, back here in the, in the back. I know there's going to be some interaction problems, even though it's going to be over 10 foot away from the tower. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be some interaction. It may make it a bit directional. I don't know. I'm not putting any more poles or towers up, folks. I got three towers up. I just, you know, <laughs> I'm going to side mount it. I'm not, we're just looking to, you know, my family and my friend and his family who lives, you know, not far from us here in town. We're just looking to, uh, you know, improve, improve GMRS, you know, somewhat. And, you know, each having a base station will do it. And yes, I know there is a license. I understand all that before anybody uh, goes into uh, schooling me or uh, braiding me about that. I think it used to be $80. It's now $85, uh, if I remember correctly, for the license. I think it's good for, oh, Lord. 
my memory's bad. I think it's five years if I remember right. How long the license is good for? Anyways, I'm gonna end this now, and uh, I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna ta you know take these off here, and actually I might just go ahead and side mount it on the tower. I don't know. I'm either gonna put it on the tripod or side mount it on the tower like I want to do it. I won't get the coax running under the house and do it right. It's just gonna be a temporary deal, so at least I can test this. 73s for now. Okay, a little bit more video clip. I've uh, I've mounted the uh, lower like mast mounting piece with the brackets on my uh, Vinette fence rail post. I've said I'm going to temporary. Right? I don't have enough time today to actually to actually uh, you know side mount a pole you know a little ways up on the tower and back here in the back. So I'm just going to use that in the tripod for right now. Something I didn't show about this antenna is. Is uh, you notice where the hole is? Well, that's the mounting hole for this. And as you notice, your SO239 connector, since it'll mount up, sit up here on the top. Bolt goes through both. Um, your SO239 connector is recessed. So, uh, and uh, there's a collar. Let's see if I can get that to show up. Yes, I know my deck needs to be painted, and so does this old glider. I'm a, uh, you know, way behind on home projects. That's for sure. It's recessed, so it's not as critical, you know, about getting your uh, coaxial connection, you know, sealed up on this. I probably still run some. I, I tend to overdo things, so I probably still put some tape and some silicone over the tape. I don't just tape things. Uh, I find tape alone; it fails in time and uh, tends to allow moisture in any way. So I tape things and then silicone over it. That's my inexpensive silicone seal, or uh, yeah seal <laughs> whatever you want to call it anyways that's all for this part of the project be back in a bit um, this coax I'm going to use for this I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, I'm going to estimate my length that I'm going to need for whenever I do the final mounting so I'm going to have a lot of extra length for this little temporary tripod set up just to give everything a trial run I've had this coax for for this spool for many years. It's just a regular little old mini eight with a clear jacket, but I think it'll work okay for this. Okay, there's the antenna all together up in the air. I've just got it on the uh, temporary mounting, a bent piece of fence rail post tripod. I just ran the coax in through the window just so I could test it. That's not how it's going to be left. Um, I run, I run all my uh, coaxial cables through a through spot in the foundation and uh, up through the floor. But for this, for just testing it and this little test setup, I mean, it's just going to have to run through the window. Anyways, I thought I'd give everybody a look at what it looks like actually, actually in the air. Well, that's a good deal. I'm, I'm glad to hear, well, I'm glad to know the radio works, and apparently antenna does too. It's pretty sad. I don't even, I don't even have a simple UHF, uh, you know, SWR meter. I just don't, I don't have anything. I got some VHF stuff. My analyzer will do VHF. I got nothing for UHF. <laughs> so, I had to go by the measurements uh, on the antenna and, and uh, pray it and the radio both work, you know. Well, they said all the way from no matter where you set it at in the uh, spectrum from 400 to 500 megahertz, whatever you set it at should have, uh, you know, no higher than a than 1.5, you know, across uh, from 400 to 500. So I don't guess there's much uh, much chance in uh, messing it up, really. No, no, I'd say if it's that. It's my friend and my neighbor, and within that apparently it's working, folks. Probably no way you could. He's on a he's no, on a handheld. Uh, cause a problem. We're on GMRS six. I'm shooting a little bit of video. You know, I didn't start right away of us talking, showing its work. I've done a little bit of video here and there through the whole process of showing the antenna, putting it together, setting it up temporarily, and now with the the little Kenwood. Uh, oh God, 
for the purposes of the video. What is this? A TK-805, uh, uh, I can't remember if it's B Bravo or D Delta. I think it's B Bravo. <laughs> Well, I mean, I notice like you. I mean, you've always sounded good on uh, on your handheld, but you know, I, it's probably the speaker, you know, and this little dude, probably a little better receiver on this thing too. But I mean, you sound you sound like yourself, you know, natural on this radio. Ah, damn, well, that's that's not the best in the world, but it's it's me nonetheless. So. Anyway, yeah, it, I don't know. It's it's good and clear. I will say one thing. Uh, I can turn the volume all the way down on this thing now. Uh, the next notch is off, and it's uh, plenty of signal. Uh, with the others, I had to have uh, had to have the volume up quite a bit. So apparently, you're doing something right. Oh yeah, I can imagine back here in the back radio room, going through you and I both having to go through all them walls for your house, my house, both. Well, that sounds encouraging. It's definitely putting out a, you know, much, uh, much stouter signal for sure. Then, well, I, uh, I definitely, definitely appreciate the uh, check. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video because time I put all this together, you know how I'm so long-winded. It's probably gonna be like eight minutes long. I put all the small clips together. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to learn to shut up and make things shorter. His wife in the back. Okay, there you have it, Not folks. It seems to be working. Trouble.